In today's video, we're gonna learn how to submit your iOS app to the App Store. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below. You guys know the drill. And let's do this very impromptu video. So I've already got one of my own apps that I am, am going to submit a app update for. I've got it opened up here in App Store Connect. Of course, you need a Apple developer account to submit apps or updates. So here we are on the page for that app. I have also got that app here, the project folder. Let's go ahead and open up its workspace. I've taken the liberty of fixing a few small bugs in this app, which is essentially what we are going to submit. The first thing we want to actually do for the sake of my memory and obviously for the sake of testing is build and run the app in a simulator, make sure it actually does work. And then we can talk about the submission process. So for those of you who haven't seen this app in prior videos of mine, it's more or less just a dessert recipe app, nothing too fancy. Basically there's categories, you can search a variety of recipes to get diabetes, cause who doesn't like desserts? And we can say favorites and whatnot as well. So cool, so app is definitely working. Let's talk about the two or three steps that we really need to do to submit this app. So of course you need to have a bundle ID registered. Presumably you have entered this when you created the project. And you can also go ahead and add your Apple developer accounts to Xcode. If you go to the signing and capabilities tab, we can see here that I already have ASN Group LLC, which is um, my LLC that I publish under. If you don't see this here, you can actually hit the drop down and there will be an option to add a account. Now we already have version 2.6 here ready for sale and we're going to be introducing a new version. So in your new apps case, it would just be version 1.0 presumably, but we'll go ahead and make this 2.7. Gonna go ahead and create this here and just bear with it. And it's gonna go ahead and create version 2.7 for you just like that. So some important things to note here, of course, it still brings in the screenshots from prior uh, versions, the prior version, I should say. App Store Connect has changed a little bit. This what's new box used to be up here, but recently they've moved it down here. So we're gonna need to fill this out. And I wanna say this app is localized to a bunch of languages. So we'll take care of this in a moment. Let's actually work on getting this guy uploaded. So now that we're, our app is working, compiling, it's good to go, ready to hit the App Store, we're gonna go ahead and update the version here to match our version on the App Store. And we're gonna update this build number as well. Now your executable, your app that you release has both a version and a build number. You can have a single version with N number of builds. Perhaps you had version 2.7 and then you fix something else and you can submit a new build, so on and so forth. So now we've got our version, our builds, now it's time to archive and get this up to the App Store. So we can just go up to the toolbar here, hit product, and we have archive, but you'll notice it's grayed out. And the reason that it is, is because we've selected a simulator in the target for deployment. We wanna change it to any iOS device, ARM64, and we'll go ahead and hit product, archive, and just bear with this at this point in regards to it's gonna compile, link, and open up the Xcode organizer window. Depending on you know your specs of your machine, your MacBook or desktop, this will take anywhere between 30 seconds to a couple minutes. Also obviously depends on the size of your app. This app is not super large by any means, so I presume it will be rather quick. So we just have a today tab in here, browse some nice videos and uh, icons going on. We can of course tap into some of these recipes and see the picture, directions, uh, ingredients. We can add also these two favorites and add the directions and whatnot to our grocery list or uh, ingredients, I should say. That's basically what this app does. So all this archives, so what we can start doing over here is filling out the what's new. So I'll just fill this one out. So I'll just say bug fixes and stability improvements. 
Now we need to fill this out in my case for all the different localizations here. I will cut the video so you guys don't have to sit through me updating this as well as translating all of this text. Some other things to keep in mind is you of course need to fill out all your metadata. So in my case, it is all filled out already because I've submitted a initial version, but you'll need things like the description. Let me actually change this back to English. You'll need things like the screenshots for various uh, sizes. So without a notch, with a notch, I think this app supports iPad as well, yep. We'll want the description, we'll want some uh, keywords, marketing URLs, et cetera, et cetera. You'll also need to fill out the app information, which in this case, whoops, let's not change pages because I haven't saved. Uh, app information, which includes like the name, the subtitle, pricing, which this app is free, privacy labels, et cetera. So it looks like this is still chugging along here. Actually, it looks like it succeeded. Ah, here we are. So here's the Executor Organizer window with the Desserts app version 2.7 build one. And we conveniently have this huge distribute app button. We'll just hit it. We're gonna say, go on up to App Store Connect. We want to upload rather than export the IPA, which is the binary for our app. It's gonna show you a bunch of things here like fetching the app record, etc., etc. Sometimes this fails for really strange transient reasons. Uh, if it does, you can either try it again or there is another app called Transporter. Let's see if I can find it, Transporter. And you can actually use this as well to uh, upload to the uh, to App Store Connect. Now it wants me to sign in here, which I am not gonna do, we'll see if uh, this guy decides to do its job. And maybe I'll cut the video uh, if it takes too long or decides to just not work. So bear with me here. What it's essentially trying to do is fetch the record that we have here in App Store Connect so it knows where to upload to. If it takes too long, like it is right now, in my opinion, we, oh, there it goes. All right, looks like it found a bunch of, uh, found the record and it's giving us some pre-checked options here. We'll just accept those. Continue, continue. Basically, it's telling us that Xcode will automatically handle the code signing, which is, our uh, distribution profile. Of course, I already have created that here on my computer. Um, you actually don't need to create that manually anymore. Once you sign into the to your Apple ID account with your developer account linked, Xcode will create, if needed, the files and download them for you. So back in the day, you had to do a lot of manual configuration like seven, eight years ago. Uh, that is no longer the case, thankfully so. So now it's gonna say processing. It'll show you a summary with your app icon, the team, it shows you the certificate. It even tells you that it's cloud managed, the profile, the bundle ID, whether symbols are included and some other information as well, like frameworks and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and continue here. And hopefully it will upload fairly quickly. This again takes anywhere between a few seconds to perhaps a few minutes. Maybe I won't cut the video so you guys can see this uh, live and in action. If you want to forward by all means, uh, go ahead. So we'll just sit here and basically saying waiting for response, presumably from Apple. Apps are Connect still kind of sucks in my opinion. It has come a long way for um, you know the past several years, but it's still really slow and I would love to see some improvements made on Apple's part in terms of reliability. Um, it's it's just incredibly slow, not only on uploads and other API access, but even just like loading this page. So for example, if I hit the save button, like in this case, it was pretty quick. If I refresh this page, sometimes it just spins and it takes quite a while to refresh, which is um, a little nuts. Like even in this case, like it takes a little longer than I would expect it to take. And looks like in this case, the screenshots didn't load in right away, but I digress with my first world uh, complaints. If we come back here, it's performing a SPI check, which I have no idea what this stands for in all honesty. But so long as it passes, it uh, should be good to go. We're back to waiting for response. And I probably will speed up this part of this video because I'm myself, I'm getting annoyed at this point. So we shall see. Someone needs to put on some Jeopardy music at this point. But essentially, this will deliver your app to App Store Connect. Now, if anything is, you know, goes awry or any error occurs, you'll see a 
large error icon with some descriptions down below. You can just Google those or frankly drop them in the comments down below. I've seen quite a few of them over the years. Uh, the biggest ones that I have seen or most common, I should say, is if your bundle ID is totally incorrect, uh, meaning that it's not registered with Apple and Apple doesn't know that it even exists, you'll get an error. Also, if you've already uploaded a app, a IPA for the version you're trying to upload for, so here we go ahead, it actually shows it's uploading the package to the App Store at this point, which is misleading because it's not actually going to the App Store, it's going to App Store Connect, and when you submit it and release it, then it goes to the App Store, but anyways. Um, but what I was saying earlier is if you have a version here um, that you've already uploaded for, it'll basically yell at you and say, hey, you already have an app in App Store Connect for this version of build, either change the version number or change the build number. All right, so almost done here. So once this is actually uploaded, the where the place where you can see your build is if you go to test flight here, you'll actually see your builds and version numbers show up under here. So it looks like it, are, it already populated version 2.7, build one, and it is in fact processing, and that's because we've got a green check mark here that this succeeded. And we can actually go ahead and close out Xcode here. I'll close up the simulator as well. And here we gotta wait for the app to process. So I'll just go ahead and give it a pause here since processing is really a waiting game. It could take, again, anywhere between a couple seconds. Generally, it's pretty rare, but call it a minute to a couple hours. I've seen some larger apps from, you know, some enterprise companies take a couple hours to process. So we'll, uh, we'll pause it here when we're back. We'll also have the uh, what's new boxes filled out and all the localizations so we can just submit this guy for review. Looks like our build has just finished processing. I have also filled out all of the localized what's new text boxes. So now we can go ahead and submit. So first we see here it is missing compliance. So we'll hit this manage and I already know we need to check no here. Most folks will be checking no. You can go ahead and read the blurb if you so choose to do so. We'll do no and hit the start internal testing, which will shoot out an invite to the folks I've got here on test flights. We'll go back to the App Store tab and to our 2.7 prepare for submission. Next up, we need to attach this build to this submission. So here we have a build section, super creatively named. I'll hit this button and we'll see a single build, I believe in here, which matches the version, which is 2.7, build number one. We'll check it, good to go. And I believe that's all we need to do since I have filled everything else out already. Hit that save button and we'll try to hit uh, add for review. This used to be called submit for review but it has since been changed. So here it is asking us to confirm. We'll go ahead and hit continue. And I believe it takes us to a new page now. Let's see what we've got. So it looks like we've still got a spinner. This is what I was talking about earlier, that uh, abstract connect, it's a tad bit slow. So just bear with it here. If it really drives you crazy, just refresh the page and do it again. Frankly, it doesn't really get better than that. So. We'll, uh, we'll see how, how this works. So it looks like it's taking its time. There it goes, all right. So we should have another confirmation page, which we do. So it's saying confirm your submission. Items ready to review is this new App Store version. Um, I also wanna say if you have like uh, an Apple Watch app or uh, in-app purchases, those will be listed here as well. So it kind of shows you like a bird's eye overview of what you're submitting to Apple for review. We're just submitting this app update. So we'll hit that submit button and we will be good to go. Momentarily, we'll see the status of this change to waiting for review once it decides to get its life together and refresh the page. So just bear with Xcode, rather apps for connect here. Too many times of bearing with Xcode, I always end up saying Xcode. So just bear with it here. And once again, it should take you back to that summary page, like so, maybe, maybe not. Ah, there we go. So it is back now on this page and it says the new status is waiting for review. And we should have this review, the submission rather accepted uh, pretty quickly since it's an update and Apple has gotten pretty quick about this. So that is uploading your app from Xcode project to the app store in a nutshell. Some steps that I got to kind of skip here is filling out all this metadata, which is self-explanatory in my opinion. Let me know if you have any questions regarding that down below, anything that I covered or didn't cover. 
I'm happy to help, happy to answer. If you haven't dropped a like down below, don't forget to do so. It really helps out the channel and engagement. Hit subscribe, share on Twitter, all the socials. Love to connect with you folks on LinkedIn as well. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.